woodworking project does not have to be complicated. A good example is this magazine rack. With its simple cuts, butt joints, and screws holding the parts in place, it's a great weekend project that anyone can tackle. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make it. Let's get started. The project started out at the drawing board and ended up deciding on going with a simple design with an angled front. This stand's actually being used as a menu stand in a Mexican restaurant. The menu is kind of a little rustic, so I chose pine for its grain and its availability. I started the build by cutting two 1x6s in half that I would then later glue together to make the two sides of the rack. The next step in our project is to run the boards across the joiner. I have a small joiner with only a two foot table, but if you don't have a joiner at all, there are other ways to achieve a nice straight edge to get a proper glue joint. One way is using a hand plane. This is a Stanley number no. 7, which is a joiner hand plane meant for straightening out the edges of boards. When you are running a board across a joiner or either using your hand plane, there is a certain way you want the board oriented. When you sight down the board, you'll see that one side is curved out and one side is curved in. You want this, the part that's curved out to be facing up, meaning the part that's bowed in faces down on the table. When you make your passes across the joiner, you'll hear it only cut a little off of each end, and as you take more and more passes, it'll take longer and cuts at each end until they meet in the middle, meaning you have a long, straight joint that'll be good for your glue up. Grab some glue clamps and clamp the pieces together. Just make sure you've got enough glue and it's smeared evenly across the edge. With those clamped, I did the same process to two more boards, joining them, gluing them, and clamping them. Once in place, I let them sit to dry, and like any good woodworker, I use the extra time to clean my shop. Good morning. Here's our version of the break front cabinet. After a couple of episodes, I mean once my floor was swept, the glue had dried enough to run the boards through the planer. I planed two of the boards to 7 eighths of an inch, and the other two to 3 quarters of an inch, even though I only ended up using one of the 3 quarter inch boards. Using the menu, I decided to make the rack 36 inches tall, join the back, and then square it off one side. You then mark its length at 36 inches and using your tool of choice, cut it to its final dimension. Measuring from the jointed edge of the board, I set a straight edge to a taper of 10 and a half inches down to seven inches. I chose to cut the taper on the bandsaw. You could also use a circular saw. Afterwards, I cleaned up this cut on the joiner. I traced the taper onto the other side panel and then cut and joined the edge. With those parts made, I cut three 14 inch sections from the 3 quarter inch panel. These parts will make up the fronts of each one of the shelves. To reveal more of the covers, I marked and cut an arch into the tops of each one of the boards. The curves were then cut out using a bandsaw and then I cleaned them up using my oscillating spindle sander. To soften the edges, I eased the corners with a 1 quarter inch round over bit. Up next, I decided that I wanted to round over the front top edges of the side pieces. For that task, I used a belt sander, sanding it down to the line that I had drawn. And with the router still handy, I ran it down both front edges of the side panels. Taking a piece of scrap, I measured, cut, and ripped it to 14 by 2 inches. With its corners already rounded, I was able to move on and mark out where it would be on the panel. This piece will make up a rail on the top rear of the rack. I then went on to transfer the mark from one panel to the other. Using a 3 8 of an inch rabbiting bit, I cut a groove that would accept a quarter inch piece of plywood on the back of the rack. I'll now demonstrate the most dangerous way I could think of to route the groove in the top rail. With the pieces balanced in position, I measured for the bottom part of the shelves that would catch the magazines. They measured 2.5 inches, 3.5 inches, and 4.5 inches from top to bottom. I rough cut these pieces to 15 inches long, joined their edges, and ripped them to their widths. I then cut them to their final 14 inch long length. These pieces were then glued to the lower inside face of the angled parts of the shelves. When clamped in place, I flipped it over and shot a couple brad nails in to hold it in place. With the pieces carefully in place, I marked their position. This would act as a guide in the assembly later on. With the shelves removed, I marked out some points where pilot holes could be drilled. I then grabbed my brad point drill bits and got to work on the drill press. With the side panels clamped together, I'm able to drill holes that are perfectly aligned, making it possible to position the shelves evenly on both panels. Using a countersink bit, I made room for the heads of the screws. Well, it was now time for assembly, so I ran two screws, one at each end of where the shelf would be mounted, allowing for just a little bit to protrude through the back side of the panel. The screw point would make it easy to position the shelf on the panel without it slipping out of place. 
With the piece firmly clamped, I was able to continue the pilot holes up into the shelf and then secure it in place with 1 and 5 8 inch screws. With the original two screws removed, drill pilot holes and run screws into those holes also. Repeat these steps to the following two shelves and then you'll be ready to attach the second panel. Once again, run two screws into each location where the shelves will attach and then carefully position it, aligning it with the opposite side. I checked for unevenness by looking for wobble on the table saw surface. Afterwards, I just repeated the same steps by drilling pilot holes and then screwing the shelves in place. Using maple plugs cut on the drill press with a plug cutter, I filled the holes. With the clamp pinching in the side panels, I was able to position the top rail about three quarters of an inch down from the top. I used my square to get the spacing even. You can see here that I had to compensate for the radius of the router bit to make sure the back panel would seat flush in the rabbit. The rail was also attached by drilling, screwing, and plugging the holes. I used a belt sander with a 120 grit belt to smooth out the plugs. When sanding pine, it's especially rough on getting loaded up in the belt, so you can use a sanding belt cleaner, which is basically a giant eraser, and this will clean the belt right up. The final step in our project is going to be mounting the plywood back to the stand. But first we want to go ahead and do our finish to where we have easier access to the back, especially if you're brushing on your finish. I'll be mixing up sort of an orangey wash to match the menu uh, that's going in the uh, Mexican restaurant. Oftentimes they are pretty colorful places, so sort of an orange tone to this I think will look good. Then I'm going to apply a polycrylic, a Minwax polycrylic as its top coat. I'll be mixing those paints in a clear jar to give me a good idea of the color and then afterwards spraying it on with this spray gun that runs off of the air compressor. If you don't want to spray yours, you can always brush it on, roll it on, or whatever will be the appropriate way to apply the finish that you'll be using. Let's go ahead and get started. I began by adding some color, water, and shaking up the mixture. Filtering your paint makes sure you don't get any lumps or clumps into your spray gun. I first dusted the piece off without spraying paint and then shot a little color on the back side to make sure it looked okay. I then moved around to the side and the front. I sprayed on several coats and then I wiped it down to even out the color. The piece was then lightly sanded with 320 grit sandpaper just to knock off the fuzz, but not enough to wear through the orange. I applied a top coat of Minwax Polycrylic, a water-based finish that comes in cans for brushing and you can also purchase it in a spray form. And last but not least, nail a piece of quarter inch ply into the rabbit on the back of your piece. A simple project like this makes for a great learning experience for beginners and for people who have limited tools. With its sturdy construction and vibrant colors, it'll be a perfect fit in the Mexican restaurant. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. You can do so by clicking the red subscribe button at the end of this video. I'll also be posting some pictures of this over on Facebook, so be sure to get over there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.